Receive God's benediction. Beloved, you and I are called to walk in the footsteps of Jesus of Nazareth. Remember Simon Peter, who proclaimed with joy, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. May we follow Jesus in the manner of the rock on whom Jesus chose to build his church. Let's spread this same kind of joy everywhere we go. Love as God loves you. Amen.
Good morning. It's so great to be here with you today. I brought along my little helpers today. These are my grand, some of my grandchildren. And so it's a special day here at Ivy Chapel. Um, we can't all get together yet, but I did want to bring some people in here today so that we can celebrate the special day today. So who knows what this special day is? Rally day. Rally day, right. They had, they had a little uh, clue that it might be rally day today. This is the time of the year that we always have rally day here at Ivy Chapel. Now, how is it usually on rally day? Who can tell me? What do we usually do on rally day? Um, we usually play outside a lot. We do play outside when we're done with our classes, don't we? Because it's yeah. a special day. And we usually have a big picnic. Oh, yeah. So we play outside mm -hmm. at the picnic. Uh, what else do we do? Usually we have a, a theme of some sort. Does uh -huh. anybody remember any themes we might have had? Uh, I don't. You don't? One year I it was... Bird. A bird? A bird. Maybe. Meet a dove? Oh, you got the dove? Maybe. Maybe we, we had one on these. I remember, remember we did. Remember up there with the wine glass and the grapes? Oh, yeah. That's the communion with the wine glass and the grapes and the wheat that represents the, the, uh, bread. the bread. Right. That's the communion banner. You're right. So one time we had a theme. Um, it was with God. All things are possible. And one time we had a theme. It was like superheroes. We can do all things with God. Oh, yeah. And God, God is great. And we can be... Uh, superheroes. Mm -hmm. So today I made a theme also because this is the time of year we can't all get together for rally day which is when we all come together to celebrate our new classes and our new teachers so we can't get together yet at this time but I did want to celebrate that you all are starting what? What are you going to start soon? Um, school. Yeah. School, right. And are you going to get new what? I start on, I start on teachers. Monday. You start on Monday. New teachers, right. My Rory teacher. and Holly are starting on Monday. My, my teacher is Miss Dad. Oh, that's fun that you already know who your teacher is. And we're starting Holly, in one Holly's week. Teacher right, you'll start in one week on the 31st. I miss I'm starting that, in Oh, it's so exciting to start back to school. Now, it's a little different this year, isn't it? Yeah. What's, we have to do it what? at virtual. We have to do it at home and virtual. So when we go to school, real physical school, we have to take all our things with us. So we go back to school shopping. Maybe we get a new back to school outfit. What are some of the things this year that we got that are different? For school this year did you get something at home this year i got no. i got a chromebook yeah. a chromebook right we all need our and, our we got and, and you got supplies mm -hmm. and, oh, yeah, touch we, we got all our supplies yesterday and so what about how uh, you won't have like a place to sit at home what, what do you what did oh, you get um our um, new desk. mine and holly's mimi and papa are making um us mm. desks uh -huh. and so they're um painting. oh uh, audrey got a new desk and right we're, i think we might be getting um either today or tomorrow right so we're going to have our own desks at home because we need our own space to do our work so that we can do the best we can so, so sometimes we, we might think about oh we're missing out on a lot of stuff but we're also learning a whole bunch of new things. We might learn that we really like virtual learning and doing Zoom meetings and seeing, we get to see our classmates just in a different way. Like and my best friends are in my class this year, like um, my, my friends, um, Asher and Walker. Mm -hmm. Asher and Walker, it's nice because we haven't gotten to see them over the and summer yeah, and we can see them on our computers well, in our actually, classes. I haven't seen them, but they've been like playing outside because oh, right. Asher's my neighbor. Yep, because oh, we have to social distance and wear our masks, don't we? That's very important. Mm -hmm. Some kids are going back to school and physical yeah. school and they have to wear masks, which is good to keep us safe. We all need to wear our masks and socially distance to keep yeah, us safe. They have to wear them so, all day. so our theme today, I made a theme and I want you guys to help me. Okay, who can see what this is? What does this one say? <clears throat> Be strong and be, be strong, strong and, and courageous. Right. Here you go, Jane. You can hold that one. Oh, worry. What does this one say? Do not be frightened or dismayed. Do not be frightened or dismayed. How about this one, Audrey? For the Lord your, your God will be with you. For the Lord your God will be with you. And Holly, what does this one say? Do you remember? Hold it up real high. Okay. Wherever you go. And that's a verse from the Joshua, Bible. You could, what is it? Joshua 1, chapter 1, verse 9. Right, jo Joshua, chapter 1, verse 9. So here, Holly, you hold this one. Now hold them up there. Oop, did we get them in the wrong order? Let's put them in the right order. Be strong and courageous. Do not you take that one? Or dismayed. Okay, I'll that one. I 
I'll get that one. No, I get that one. Okay. For the Lord your God will be with you. Holly gets that. Wherever you go. Wherever we go, God is going to be with us. So what does it mean? Oops, I was wondering. What does it mean to be strong and courageous? Uh, brave. Brave. Be brave. Be right. Be and you know, brave. people who are brave, they don't have to have no fear. They just know that they can go out and do something and conquer something because they can do it. So be strong and courageous. What that and what does this one say? Do not be what? Be frightened. Do not be or... frightened or dismayed. So don't be afraid and don't be like hopeless. Don't think that things can't be done and that things are bad. Have hope. Don't be dismayed. Have hope. We can do things for, why can we do things? For the Lord our God is with you wherever you go. Oh, yes, you have with on the other side. That was all things are possible with God. Okay, let's hold them there in your laps. So, sometimes this summer we might have been dismayed that we can't go, oh, look this way, that we can't go back to school. Or maybe we've been frightened about how things are going to go. But you know what's important? We can look forward with hope. We can know that God is with us. God is there helping us to know what to do. And he's with us as we start this new school year. So I got you some things so that... Oh, really? Oh, yes. Oh, okay, cool. so this one's for Audrey. And all my little children that are in our awesome. Sunday school are going to get these. Nice. Watch for them coming. That's Jane. That's nice. Holly and nice. Rory. And Janie, would you hand me one of those over there? These are from Miller and Charlie when I see them later. So, there's some things in here. One of them is... A... Oh, look at Charlie's. One of these angel. is a... Oh, an angel. Do you know what kind of an angel this is? Squishy. A squishy angel. Why do you think I put a squishy angel in there? Because it's about God. It is about God. And it's, if you get anxious, angel. it's one of those things you can squish when you get anxious. So you squish your little squishy angel, and, and it'll remind you that God's with you. Football. Here's that a little football. Jesus. Jesus, and what's this symbol on there? The fish. The Christian fish, right. That's to remind us that Jesus is... You don't have a football? Oh, dang, dang. oh yeah, I got a bouncer. Yeah, right, we wear it out. This one's a no flip and a... Uh, right. right, slap and so, bracelets. Slap bracelets? This one says, I'll praise him every day with an owl. This one says, Jesus is my hero. Yeah, you Can got I a bouncy ball. This is, is my glow. glow. In a minute, when we're done, when we get to my house. So, and that is glow in the dark flying just for fun. But we also, like Holly got out there, she, we each get a journal. And it says, can I look at your journal? No, you can look at mine. Okay. Then I can I. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It says, I've got the spirit in me. But on the back, it says, the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Joshua 1.9. And, and, oh, yeah, and there's also a pen in here that says that. I've got the spirit and God is with me wherever I go. And so we've got nine. these journals. So throughout the year of this new school year, you can write in your it's slime. You can write in your journal about things that going on are going on in your life. What if you get frightened or discouraged? You could write in here, say, hey God, I'm feeling a little frightened and discouraged. Write your thoughts to God in here. And things that you think about, things you're worried about, things that are happy, if something really great happened at school, you can write that. Or you can write about what happens with your family because with not going to school, we get to spend a lot more time with our families, and that's a blessing, too. So, can I take this off? This year, during your school year, let's remember, the Lord, your God, is with you wherever you go. I'm taking mm -hmm. this off. Will you guys go and put the candles out for me, please? Oh, yes. And while they're doing that, let's say a prayer. Dear God, we thank you that you are always with us, no matter where we go, if we're having a school at school, or if we're having school at home, if we're worshiping in our homes with everyone in our families, or if we come to worship here at, at church. And thank you for being with us. Thank you for guiding us, helping us, and loving us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Receive God's word. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 16, verses 13 to 20. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And the disciples said, Some say John the Baptist but others say Elijah, and still others say Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Jesus said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but God in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loosen on earth will be loosened in heaven. Then Jesus sternly ordered the disciples, not to tell anyone that he was the Christ. May God's blessing be upon the reading and the hearing of this holy word. Amen. Flawed, yet sacredly gifted. Beloved, you and I are blessed today with a beautiful story from the life of Jesus of Nazareth. The central figure in this story, in addition to Jesus himself, is Simon Peter. We know him primarily by the single name Peter. In fact, the pinnacle of the Roman Catholic Church is St. Peter's Basilica in Vatican City. Roman Catholics think very, very highly of Peter. He was the one, as we know, whom Jesus selected to lead the church once Jesus was no longer present. And after Peter, popes have served as the leader of the Roman Catholic Church ever since. Peter and each and every one of the popes function in a role that is called the vicar of Christ. In other words, they are believed to be the representatives on earth of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And one of the teachings of the Roman Catholic Church is apostolic succession. So they view a continuous connection between the present-day pope all the way back to St. Peter and then Jesus Christ himself. That there is an unbroken chain, and you think of each pope and St. Peter as links in that chain that you can trace all the way back to Jesus himself. Powerful roots of the Christian church. St. Peter's Basilica in Italy 
monitored by the Pope's flamboyantly uniformed Swiss guard, adjoins a spacious public square. I personally find a lot of humor in this. St. Peter's Square is actually an oval. It's a round square. Inside of the basilica is a bronze statue of St. Peter. This work of art is attributed to Arnolfo di Cambio, a 13th century Italian artist. The statue of St. Peter in a seated position sits on an ornate marble chair. In his left hand, Peter holds keys pointing upward in this manner. And as we just heard in the gospel reading, these are symbolic of the keys to the kingdom of God. The statue has Peter's right hand in this position, so he is offering a blessing. And his right leg, especially his right foot, is extended out in front of the rest of his body. So that part of the statue actually uh, goes out beyond the marble base that the statue rests upon. And somewhere along the line, it became a tradition for Christians who were making a pilgrimage to St. Peter's Basilica to touch or even to kiss this right foot of St. Peter. And so many people have done this now down through the generations that over the years, over time, the, a portion, a significant portion of the toes and the right foot of this statue has worn away. It's just gone because so many Christians have made contact with that part of the statue uh, in admiration of St. Peter and in devotion to Christ. So it's a powerful thing. Now, we could ask ourselves, uh, clearly, Roman Catholics have elevated Peter uh, to a status second only to Jesus Christ himself. Did Simon Peter always act in ways that Jesus admired? I think we probably know the answer to that even before we get into it. Flawed, yet sacredly gifted. Well, think of this. Before uh, Jesus identified Peter as the one that he was going to build his church on, the rock, uh, his name was Simon, and initially, when Jesus was looking, he was on a recruiting trip, and he was trying to get people to follow him as his disciples. The very first time that Jesus met him, he was Simon, son of Jonah, Simon, brother of Andrew, uh, and Jesus saw Simon and Andrew by the shore of the Sea of Galilee, and he invited them to become some of his disciples, and they did. Well, a thing that I kind of noted, you're familiar with the game Simon Says, I'm sure. It's where uh, all the players, other than the one who's uh, Simon at the moment, are supposed to either do something or not do something based on two words, Simon Says. And if you hear someone say, Simon says, stand up, then you stand up. If someone says, scratch your left ear, and you scratch your ear, you're out of the game because they didn't say, Simon says, scratch your left ear. Well, here's the thing. Jesus of Nazareth does not play by the rules of the game, Simon says. And so we're going to consider a couple of different instances where uh, Simon liked to, he was a very strong personality. He liked to call the shots. Nothing really inhibited him much. He wanted to give orders, and, uh, and he just kind of charged into uh, a lot of situations. But think about these. 
the very next verse after today's scripture reading, Matthew chapter 16, verse 21, reads, From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders and the chief priests and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised. Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, never, this will never happen to you. And then, how did Jesus respond? Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on the things of God, but on human things. So, obviously, that's pretty strong language. Jesus calls him Satan. He wasn't happy with what Simon Peter was trying to do right then and there. Here's another instance. The Gospel of John, chapter 13. Uh, this is the lead-in to the Last Supper. And you may recall that before uh, eating the Passover meal, as they were making preparations... Jesus took off his outer garment, wrapped a towel around his waist, and he proceeded to wash the feet of his 12 disciples. When he gets to Peter, Peter tells Jesus, You will never wash my feet. Jesus replies, Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. And here's one more. Later, on that same night, Jesus was betrayed and arrested. Uh, Peter had stuck his neck out and said to Jesus that he was never going to betray or deny Jesus. And Jesus prophesied, telling Peter, Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Matthew 26, verse 34. At the conclusion of chapter 26, Peter does deny Jesus three times. And verse 74, and immediately a rooster crows. Well, so we get a pretty clear picture that while there were times Simon Peter was uh, spot on, there were other situations where he kind of jumped the gun or uh, he maybe objected to something that Jesus was trying to uh, prophesy or to teach, and Jesus took issue with that. Flawed and yet sacredly gifted. Well, one of the songs that uh, we've learned uh, at a very young age, and we continue to teach this to our girls and boys uh, in church, is I Am the Church. So I thought I'd uh, mention this one. We were familiar with those words, I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together, all who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. And then it goes on to sing, The church is not a building. The church is not a steeple. The church is not a resting place. The church is a people. Well, I think we know what is meant by the church is not a building in this song. And it's a much-loved song with a lot of meaning. Uh, emphasizing that uh, the church is meant to be human beings alive and sharing the love of God. Uh, so it's, it's action. It's, it's not a structure. But we do have in Scripture multiple places where we are taught about being the building of God. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 1 refers to the faith community as a building of God. Ephesians 4, verse 12, a building of the body 
of Christ. And then uh, one that's quite well known, in 1 Corinthians 3, the Apostle Paul writes, You are God's planted field. You are God's field. You are God's building. Oikodomain is a Greek word for this. You're God's domain. And so I think for me this connects with today's gospel reading because Jesus uses a form of this same word to say, on you, I'm going to build my church. You're going to be my domain. You are my building. So that's a beautiful uh, imagery and something that we probably need to balance with uh, singing that the church is not a building when we sing songs like I am the church. Well, Ivy Chapel United Church of Christ nominating process for 2021 will be ramping up soon. Each autumn, one of our pursuits as God's faith community is to identify individuals within our congregation whom God has blessed with talents and abilities to serve in particular roles in the overall ministry of God's church. This process requires a lot of prayer and time and creativity. You and I need eyes of faith to see which person is a good match for which particular role. With God's help and guidance, we are led to some beautiful discoveries, many times some holy surprises. I mention this because Again, I think from Matthew 16 today, early on in his ministry, this was part of what Jesus was attempting to do. He was observing his 12 disciples and trying to figure out who would serve well in which slot or role. Jesus needed to identify which of his followers were suited to serve God in which particular way. And so we have this uh, question that Jesus asks, which you'll notice we had a photo of the cover of this, the Jesus Diaries. It says, who Jesus is to me. This is kind of the way Jesus set up uh, asking the question with his disciples. Or I, I guess you could say of his disciples. He started out, hey guys, what's the word on the street about me? What are people saying? What do folks think of me? Is it good? Is it bad? Does anybody have an opinion of Jesus of Nazareth? And then, as we know, he kind of got a laundry list of different things that people were thinking of him uh, as uh, being uh, a prophet, Elijah, Jeremiah. And then Jesus turned the question, made it much more personal. And I think this is where uh, the gospel today fits in with every one of our lives. Jesus turns to us and he says, who do you say that I am. And right away, Simon Peter pipes up, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, Jesus ex exclaims. Then Jesus goes on to give Simon this new name. Jesus says, I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. Wow. Imagine the Son of God telling you, you are the rock I'm going to build my church on. What a powerful thing that must have been for Simon Peter. And it's also powerful for us. Because Jesus needs human beings to continue to be the foundation for the Christian church in 2020 and beyond. So, consider this. 
God loves you. God is calling you. Here's what your Savior is saying to you this day. Blessed are you. I know fully who you are, my child, and I still love you. You are flawed, and yet you are sacredly gifted. I am going to build my church on you. Let us bow and let us pray together. God, you are the creator of this day. We praise you for your gift of life. God, finite and infinite, you are the God of the entire universe, vast beyond our wildest dreams. You also are immediate, right here, in this place, at this moment. You are intimately present with us. God, finite and infinite, we appeal to you in prayer now. We pray for our nation, the United States of America. And we pray for your world, God. Remind us, dear God, that every country on earth is your homeland. Remind us that every human being in this world is your child. We lift up our prayers this day for all who continue to be affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. We pray for your blessing upon first responders and healthcare workers, those who are serving, placing themselves in position of danger and illness in order to care for others. We admire them so, and we pray, O Holy One, we pray in your name, Christ Jesus, that your spirit will guide and help all the healthcare workers and first responders. We pray for those who are in the hospital this day we ask your blessing upon those who are recovering from an illness. We pray for those who are being diagnosed right now. We pray for those who are recovering from a procedure or a surgery of some kind. And in particular, we lift up to your care this day, Levi Johnson and his parents, Audrey and Scott. We lift up to your care this day, Wendy Patterson. We pray for others that we do not acknowledge by name, but you know each one by name, God. You know us and you love us. May we model your unconditional love and profound care ourselves. Shape us into your disciples, Christ Jesus. Show us where we may serve as your witnesses by offering a testimony as Simon Peter did. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And we pray together now in your words, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
gather this day to praise everlasting God. Look at this plate full of stones. Twelve rocks. One especially large rock in the center. These are symbolic of the twelve. Jesus' followers. Each of them were given unique gifts by God. Each of them attempted to follow in the way of Jesus Christ. In our variety, we complement one another. Remember the words of the letter to the Romans. I appeal to you, therefore, sisters and brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a sacrifice, living, holy, and acceptable to God, who is your spiritual worship. Let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good, love one another with mutual affection, outdo one another in showing honor, do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit, serve God, rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. So far as it depends on you, live peacefully with everyone. Let us pray. God, beyond our knowing, we believe that you care for humble people who seek to follow you. You have protected your people when they were surrounded by trouble. You always do. You provide a way of escape from oppression. Your love never fails. Come, Holy One, transform us. Lead us and guide us to be open to your transforming spirit. Work within and among us to renew our mind and to build community. Bless all your people with wholeness and grace. You are our greatest hope. We pray in your name, Jesus. Amen.